the Blood Ravens before, and he knew they were good enemies. Blink your eyes and they'd give you a good stomping. This time, though, he figured it was them that had blinked, and him and his boys who would be doing the stomping. Still, when the Wa reached the northern reaches of Kaurava too, those Blood Ravens put up a right good fight and tore up plenty of orcs before Gorgots closed in and squashed them good. Those boys that made it took plenty of trophies and skulls, and the mechs got their green paws on plenty of the humans' gear. Those orcs that had shown the greatest bravery and skill that day were granted a true honor, promotion to Gorgut's elite personal guard. as a personal affront that the Tau had chosen a base of operations on the moon directly above the Orc Enclave in the Rock Claw Mountains of Kauravatu. More offensive still was the Arka Cannon, which exemplified the Tau principle of fighting from a safe and tactical distance. Of course, almost anything could offend Gorguts and he would have come to attack the Tau sooner or later just because they were there. Had Commander or Eska succeeded in finishing the defenses of his moon base fortress, the Orcs might have beaten themselves bloody against its shielded outer walls. Unfortunately, the smallest breach in those walls was like a crack in a dam. Once through, the orcs closed the distance on the ranks of fire warriors and crushed them beneath their massive forms. While much was looted by the orc hordes, Gorguts claimed the Arka cannon for himself, planning to use the biggest a guns he had ever seen to aid his wall. set his sights on Karava IV. He knew that sooner or later he would square off against the Alpha Legion, 
By and large, the great orc did not pay much attention to the subtle differences between the different human armies. But he knew the Chaos Space Marines, under Chaos Lord Feravius Caron, wielded great powers, and so was eager to test the strength of his orc hordes against such a foe. The greatest challenge for Gorgut's army was the unnerving face that the legions of Chaos present to their foes. What the Alpha Legion had in horror and the dark powers of Chaos, the orcs made up for in sheer numbers, size, and strength. When the battle was won, Gorguts allowed the Kalraven boys to loot their skull trophies, weapons, and other prizes, while a giant WA banner was planted where once a Chaos Vortex had been. Gorguts was concerned, the Necrons were no more than a vast army of little mechs. True enough, some of the boys seemed a bit unnerved by the dark metal battalions that massed like a lake at the base of the exhumed necropolis on the Emosan coast. But Gorguts simply made sure that they were more frightened by him, and they fought good enough. Although he'd had his doubts, the victory over the Necrons was as good a proof as any, in Gorgut's eyes, that the Kalraven boys were worth their squigs. They had a tough time of it, descending into the bowl of death among the hot sands. But as Gorgut's figured these things, orcs were for fighting, and there was nothing better than a good hard fight so long as you won. Sure, that deceivy thing had come up and turned his boys' heads this way and that. But they beat it good in the end. All the good men who gave their lives for this curse of this blasted system! Though my army lies in ruins today, I have not done fighting. And I will remember who my enemies are.
came to Kara the One, its strength and momentum had reached truly great proportions. For a brief moment, the thick, tiered defenses and heavy munitions of the Imperial Guard's stronghold threatened to stall, or worse yet, break the Warlord's orcish avalanche. And although the pink skins put up a good fight and cost Gorgut's many an orc, finally they were stomped flat. This was the first victory the old Kaurava orc clans had ever achieved on the city world of Kaurava I. The great victory provided a huge morale boost to the entire orc army, and many Hua banners were spontaneously raised there, in Dusala and across all their Kauravan territories. But few orcs were happier than the mech boys, who, in conquering the Imperial Guard stronghold, laid claim to a vast array of tanks, guns, and other spoils to be modified for orc use. Gorgut's mechs even managed to turn some of the Imperium's war factories to their use, promising readier and cheaper garrisons across Kaurava. smashed the Sisters of Battle. Warboss Gorguts saw such things as he had never guessed could fight under the banner of the Imperium. Although they were no orcs, they had fought heartily enough, and he was not sure that they were any less Bernie than his Berniest boys. He suspected that they even had their own form of war. Although anyone knows you can't have a war without proper banners. Gorguts and his elite guard claimed many trophies from the gear of the Sisterhood, being a type of human soldier they had heard of, but never before encountered. For years to come, the formidable war boss was obsessed by the winged flight of the living saint, who had fought him, going so far as to ask his best mech boys to see about making him wings of a similar kind. We came here long, long ago. We did battle with our deathless foes, the Necrons, and won. This day, this day we have lost. If they swarm again like locusts here, some other must stop them. Time 
For we shall be gone. Gorguts had learned anything in his many years leading the Orcs. It's that the Eldar, or Pointy Ears, were trouble. And it was best to crush them as soon as you had the chance. When his caravan boys found themselves in the hot sandy barrens of the Upper Waste, he gave them a good talk, warning them that they'd have to be the sharpest-eyed, fastest, choppiest Orcs ever known. While it might not be said that the Orcs anticipated every move of the quick-witted and devious Eldar, they certainly proved that Orcish strength and resilience could stand up to any such trickiness. Pressed hard by the avalanche of Orcs, the Eldar fought frantically and then, overwhelmed, succumbed. The fact that some Eldar, including the Farseer Carries, were able to retreat to their last webway gate before the advancing orcs troubled Gorguts very little. He had won. The orcs scoured the area, uncovered the many caches and depots hidden within the stronghold's grounds, and smashed a great deal of it with triumphant enthusiasm. Avalanching War rescued Lacune. There was little that the Dark Eldar could have done to defend themselves or escape with their lives. Thinking their moon base safe from notice or harm, they had squandered any chance of rebuffing the orcs that they could possibly have gained. Taril's humiliating defeat sent him as Drubael Vect and sundry other Dark Eldar fleeing back into the webway to their home city of Komara. Meanwhile, Gorguts and his orc mobs had invented a new sport, which involved putting Dark Eldar into their own cages and seeing how far they could throw them in the moon's reduced gravity. Several knobs attempted to harness and tame the warp beasts they found, but without any luck. Gorguts did not let his orcs linger for long, however. Ultimately, Lacune was one in a line of provinces to be crushed by his unstoppable war. achieved a complete and unrivaled victory over all four planets of the Kaurava system. Generations of Kauravan orcs had dreamed of such a day, never imagining that they would not only overthrow the Imperial Guard, but seven other armies to achieve their aim. All Kaurava was soon overrun and teeming with orcs. A phase of wild looting and pillaging was followed by orc settlement, wherein clans laid claim to entire territories at a time. Without the watchful eye of Gorguts, however, 
All this would have ended in confusion and petty clan warfare. Gorgas had other greater plans. The four planets of Karava were to be turned to this purpose. Mines yielded valuable metals, and fields of orcish factories produced everything required for a proper campaign of galactic conquest. A great war, staged from such an excellent platform and supplied with such resilient, war-worthy orcs, how could such a war result in anything but great victories and greater glory? They hailed the mighty leader, War Boss Korgut, Lord of all Korlu 